resilience and is resilience a skill? Uh, I'm going to do what Lee normally does to Joe. I'm going to ask a question when being <laughs> asked a question. Continue. Has there ever been a time where your resilience for either of you has not come to your aid? Therefore, we must have innate resilience, right? Because then it's only as we get older where we struggle, where we don't seem to like bounce back very quickly. It's part of a fundamental makeup of kind of who you are. So like being naturally hilarious like me. Or attractive like me. So that yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> very good. Inspiration Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on a podcast. As always, with Ryan Boniface and Jose Neuer. How are we doing, guys? Yeah, good, thank you. Very good, Lee. Thank you for asking. Glad to hear it. We we'll thank everyone for joining us again this week. Of course, we are available on all podcast platforms. Just hit subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. We're on YouTube as well. And of course, TikTok, we are live every single Tuesday. We're on a good run of Tuesdays now, guys, aren't we? Getting a bit yeah. consistent, getting about six o'clock on the GMT or we whatever are. time we are on, on at the moment. Yeah, the we are. is making us change our clocks. So follow Joe on TikTok jay noya underscore inspiration nation and he will he's on there every day and he will show you when we're going live you can watch us recording the podcast a few days before it drops ah and of course i forgot twitter at listen to in listen to o i n right we didn't even preamble this before the podcast so at the risk we of didn't. setting myself up for a fall who <laughs> is the subject master for this week and i see a look on ryan's face that suggests it may be him i think it might be well, it was definitely me last week, so I'm leaving it with you two. What we was the week, guys? What was the we always week before? Oh, yeah, the, the week before was Mr. Kemp and There's No Such Thing as the Truth. Oh, yeah, that was. Great episode. Go back and listen in the archive. I'm happy to bail out if you need Mr. Boniface. I ha- Honestly, I hadn't thought of it at all. <laughs> uh... Joe's always got one in the can. I've got a bonus if you want to go for it, if we want to go for it as well. Yeah, go on. I'll go next week. Yeah, hold on. I need to re-spin the wheel of conversation now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you'd get away with that, weren't you? Yeah. And it is Mr. Kemp who is up for conversation. So this week, I don't know if we've done a version of this before or something similar. I don't think so. But I want to ask your thoughts on resilience and is resilience a skill? Is it behaviour or is it a skill? They are my initial thoughts. So you're asking yeah, resilience is a skill that. or a yeah. behaviour. Ryan, you got any initial thoughts on this? Define what you mean by resilience. So I think one of the things that has helped me in my professional life and my work life, no, they're the same thing, aren't they? My personal life and my professional life Look at this, I'm spinning up a subject out of the air, um, is my resilience, my ability to bounce back from adversity. So something goes wrong, how do I deal with it? Work, you know, it happens over the years. You have run-ins with people, people you get on with, people you don't get on with. You drop the ball massively on something and have to recover yourself back from it. All those things we go through, especially if you're kind of career-driven people, as I imagine a lot of people listening to this are. Personal life. I was, and I've talked about this before, if you went back 10 years ago to Lee Kemp, about eight years ago, eight years ago, I was about 30K in debt and all my possessions fit inside one box and had a lot of work to self out of that hole, which I gratefully did. And I'm far on the other side of that now. And it seems like a distant memory, even though it wasn't, it's a very short time ago. But again, it was that kind of ability to, look at the long term, bounce back from things, know where I'd made mistakes and try and rectify them and push through rather than give in. And there's there's lots of different ways that it appears. There are a couple of kind of real life examples to me, but I think that level of resilience is one of the things where I've been able to be successful in things I've been successful in or, you know, be happy in my life or what's going on or overcome challenges that I've had in the past, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I do think, and I, you know, I, I, or I work with people closely. I, one of my active coaching topics is normally around resilience, where there's chances to reinforce it with people and support their learning and talk about the importance of it, especially when 
they're on the down part of something to talk about what you can take from it. Um, so I, I think it is a, a vital component. Um, but is it a behaviour or is it a skill? And the difference is a behaviour is something innate. And again, it can be shaped and it can coached, but it's very different than a specific skill that you learn, such as, you know, programming or coaching, like coaching, Joe. Coaching is a skill, I would say, rather than a behaviour. Whereas yeah. being charismatic is a behaviour rather than a skill. It's probably not the best example. And yeah. so it's what's, your, what's your views on the importance of resilience? How has it helped you guys? And do you, where do you place it? Because yeah. I see it personally, I'll just say, I'll put it out there at the start. I see it as a skill, but I think most people, or certainly lots of people I've talked with, not they disagree, but they don't necessarily see it as a skill. Yeah, I, I really like this because um, I see it as mm. both, actually. Um, I think it's a behavior and a skill because I can only refer, I think mean, you talked about your 30K debt and how you got out of that and how you climbed out of that. And I think that would be a great story, I think, that that we should dig into at some point because I think that, you know, that would resonate, you know, for a lot of people that have suffered with debt um, and maybe they'd like to some strategies around how they can get themselves. I know Ryan as well, you know, you both have really dealt with some really challenging things. You know, yourself, Ryan, as well. You know, we've had to, like, climb back from the abyss. And from my perspective, is my depression, really. Um, that's what really made me think and, and, I, and I'll come to the Montez I didn't want to be here as I said to you before and if you know my story you will dig down back to episode one of the podcast um, and you'll see that um, I just want to quickly request shout out to people on TikTok thanks for joining please ask questions please like um, please share the share the episode share this live you are now live so if you do a shout out ask a question I'll ask the guys we're we'll talking about resilience whether it's behavior or skills what are your thoughts on it at least just give us a little bit of a rundown around actually Absolutely. how we We'd love to know people's thoughts out there as yeah well. yeah um so for me with depression um i didn't feel resilient at all um i actually felt like i wasn't going to be here anymore that's how bad i felt about it um so is that a behavior or a skill i was behaving in a way that wasn't um very well um i didn't feel very well um and, but i did realize that i had to get help is that is that is that a behavior you know so it probably is um and what's the what's the skill the skill is actually learning tools to me to continue to build on that resilience and actually get to the bottom so i think it's both um i think we can have low resilience depending on how we are with our mental health for me it was for mental health and how mentally we approach things i'm definitely a lot stronger and uh, this thing's called the change the change curve as you probably all probably know, we talked about it before where you have to get to the bottom before you can come up and it's a very painful place where you get to the bottom and before you can come back up you have to get to the bottom before you can actually start to to, to rise um, i mean lee with your debt you probably have to get to the bottom and feel right i need to do something it's, it's almost like you're back against the wall you have to do something like you i'm pretty at the back against the wall moment we have to do something my depression was a back like against the wall moment mountain. yeah um it's a back it's it's it's, it's a it's a back against the wall moment where you've got to do something. So either, I was either going to be here or wasn't. That was the key. And so, you know, I, the first thing I spoke to was my beloved, told her about it. And then, you know, then I started to get help and stuff like that. And and it's made me stronger, of course, mentally. Um, so my view is it's both, I think, because you, you still have to get the skills to come out of it. And if you don't get the skills, then you, I don't think you can build resilience because you have resilience. Some of it might have been naturally, but you have to have that courage to, to, to push through and to, to change your behavior. Is that a skill? You know, um, so, you know, it, I think it's both for, from my perspective and all I can do is draw on my personal experience. So um, feel free, guys, to, uh, to, to, to come in and that you on TikTok as well. So Lee and Ryan and I just want to say a, a hi to Shush. He says, hello, mate. I say hi, sh hi, mate, you as well on the uh, on the TikTok. Over to you guys. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do what Lee normally does to Joe. I'm gonna ask a question and being <laughs> asked a question. Um, <laughs> is there ever a, a time? Is there ever a time that you just so found... you know as well? So it makes you guys feel better. I regularly get told off at home for answering questions for answering questions of a question as well. So everyone gets it from me. <laughs> is there ever been a Sorry, time? Continue, Ryan. Continue. Has there ever been a time where your resilience <laughs> for either of you has not come to your aid? I didn't feel it was going to come to my aid at all when I was depressed at all. I didn't feel that I was ever going to get out of it. 
I didn't feel there was an aid moment. It, though there must have been because I, I actually reached out and I told someone about my depression and where I was. So is that is that the moment? I suppose is is what I suppose that that was probably the moment where it was either going to go one way or the other, and um, you know because I worked for Samaritans for a year, a lot of the time when people are not going to be here anymore, or or, or commit suicide, I don't tell anybody. Um, it's only when people start to articulate it that that you know it, that that happens. So um, yeah, that's it's a really good question, but that that's my take on it. What about you, Lee? Um, so as in that I felt my resilience wasn't going to help me, do you mean? Yeah. Um, I don't think that necessarily as a starter, I had it as a really conscious concept until probably the last few years with us doing this and everything. So I wasn't so aware of it, but a bit the same with Joe. I don't know, actually. I'm just, I'm trying to remember back. And I remember like when I was going to, pay everything off and stuff like that I'd have a spreadsheet because we both know I love a spreadsheet and I'd want to track my progress so month on month I could see what's I've paid off what's left I've, I've still got things like that now that I do for various things whenever I've got goals and that um, and I, always, I remember I don't think I felt like right x number of years and this is going to be sorted boom I'm on it let's go it was more Oh, you're like this, Joe. It's more being in a process. I think it was more kind of almost transactional monthly that I've got a plan and I want to track that it's going down and that's good. But at the same point, it didn't, I didn't feel like I was necessarily walking towards a goal. I was more kind of going through the motions with it, if you like. But I don't know if that's a version of it helping or not. So I don't, I don't so, think I always had the level that I've got now, certainly, when I was a lot younger. And I think I would throw the towel in on things a lot easier, which is kind of your, your opposite to the resilience. And I think generally my instinct was to move away from a problem than tackle it face on, maybe. And then that balance has tipped as the years have gone on. Okay. So I, I actually think there's a third answer to your question. Ooh. And I think... I think it's, I think the answer is personality trait. And you're going to ask me how that differs from behavior. Behaviors are learned. Personality traits are what you're born with. You're, that's just kind of your foundation of who you are. Um, yeah. You could argue that a personality trait could be a like for spicy food or a dislike for spicy food. It's just, it's part of a fundamental makeup of kind of who you are. So like being naturally hilarious like me or attractive like me. So ah, well done. Um, Very good. So I think that personality trait comes comes into it more than anything. Like people are just people are just fighters. You know, people are either fighters or they're flyers. You know, you've heard of the flight or fight response, and I think that's that can come into the equation as well. Yes. Um, some people just can just take whatever and just move on, and some people really. Uh, struggle can, can go inside themselves, be a bit shy, and just really need bringing back out. That being said, I think there's an argument for all three. I think it's a, I think it's a makeup of all three, is my true answer. Um, everyone has an element of resilience about them or in them. Um, you know, some people will drop an egg that they're trying to make in the morning for breakfast and be fine and others will that will make them want to curl up into a ball and cry right because that's just how they are on that particular day or just generally um that's a bit of a weird analogy but it, it fits i think it's they're making an omelet at the time right? maybe maybe but they're making a floor omelet now um <laughs> flomlet flomlet um so the behavior element is that it's it is that you're taught but you know some people aren't naturally people persons but they learn to deal with that they learn to be outgoing and that's something i always struggled with in my early part of um developing myself into into a, a more well-rounded person and, and i don't think either of you would would know this or think this but i wasn't really a people person i talk quite well i come across well i have conversations with people all the time but it takes a lot out of me usually it takes a lot for me to kind of be like that and it comes back to being that having that introverted kind of tendency um i can sit in a room with people for hours and not talk to them um because that's just kind of how i am but 
I also can instigate that conversation or those conversations and kind of have that. So I think people have it about them, but you they also learn it as time goes on. Some people will have huge monumental things happen that they need to either put up or 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 fall over for. Other people are edged into it gradually throughout life. They have smaller issues that compound and grow and grow and they become kind of what kind of what they are. So I think my answer is that all three. I think I think you're born with it. Some people are naturally stronger than others. Some people are naturally smarter than others. Some people are naturally more resilient than others. Some people can only focus on one task at a time. Others can focus on 10. I think it just depends on who you are and how you are. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where I sit with that. It's a personality. I like that. Yeah. Can I just shout out quickly that there is a lot of love on TikTok for Mr. Neuer's appearance right now. So thank you, everyone, for that. Thank There's you. also some other comments that we can't read out, but I appreciate yeah. everyone trying to get a laugh out of us as they go through. So you won't make it on air, but we appreciate the effort in trying to get a trying to get a rise from us. Part of the game. Exactly. Go like on, are you gonna say so? <laughs> yeah, I like that. I think I was gonna say, as you were both talking, I was saying I think the right art is there such thing as a right answer on a philosophical question that um both is the right answer but it's more than both now it's three and i think you are right there is that bit you're built in there's a the behavior you develop and there's the skills and you have it there's things that do cross that bridge so like you ryan the, the the um extrovert part of my personality especially for work is something i've developed over the years so again being an extrovert is something that is a personality type or a behavior type but i think you can also train yourself to be able to do that and then it becomes a skill and you can i think you can both take behaviors you're not natural at and learn them or you can take behaviors you are and enhance them and i think once you really understand them and what you've got and be able to build on it and be able to use them as a skill that's re really where it comes to the forefront and i think that's a big bit of resilience like you said people will have various levels of it due to their own makeup they will then have more or less of that over time, depending on what they've been through. But if they can, you know, if you can become aware of where your level is for that and the importance of it and hone it as a skill, I just think it's one of those things. It helps you, like you were saying, Joe, with the, the whole change cycle and everything. It can help you get through that quicker. It can help you bounce back from mistakes and adversity and learn from them rather than wallowing in them. Um, and it, it's a, I, I often talk about a thing about people having what you call broad shoulders. How much can they take on? I did somebody did an interview. It's in the in the archives. People with Brian J. Esposito. A couple of fantastic interviews in there with the man, um, and he run. He's involved in more businesses than I've had hot dinners. Um, but he said it's over the years, his capacity kind of got stretched and stretched and stretched. And when he had less to do, he still had that capacity and he's doing it at his pace because that's what he's become accustomed to. And I think it's the same resilience, it's stretched. And the more that's there, the more you're able to absorb and take on. And as we all like to reference, compartmentalize in what you do. And you can, you know, it's almost like a muscle. The more you use it, the more you work it out, the more capacity it's got. Well, yeah, really I that. think it's. Oh, sorry. Just I, I think I also the reason why I talk about it is I think it can be undervalued. As in, I don't when you look at you know strengths for growth or development or leadership or you know wellness, happiness, whatever it is, you don't always see resilience there. But I, for me, I think it's such you know it should be like a top three ingredient in all those sort of makeups. Sorry, Ryan, you're going to say something. When you first asked asked the question, I was I was unsure whether I. W was on the side of skill or or behavior um and i i think it was i think i was teetering on the side of skill because if you imagine a toddler playing with lego and it falls over they're likely to cry right but if you're six seven eight nine ten years old and that happens the outcome's a lot different because you learn that, that isn't a, i still a cry when deal. my falls over yeah i'm sure i'm sure you do um I think it just kind of goes to show that the more kind of life experience you get, and I hate that phrase, but the more kind of life experience you get, the the more resilient you are to things and the the, the more tools you have in your toolbox to, to kind of fix any issues that crop up or things that happen. 
I do you know what? I don't, I really had a great thought on that. So when you said about a baby um, and how the resilience are about when they want to walk, it's actually very natural, isn't it? They want to yeah. go and walk. They don't even think about it. I actually th thinking about your thinking. I think therefore we are, must have innate resilience, right? Because then it's only as we get older where we struggle, where we don't seem to like bounce back very quickly. Because um, I mean, for a baby falling over is quite probably quite traumatic, but they don't see it as that. They just go fall down, they get back up again. They fall down, they get back up again until they enable themselves to walk. So thinking that you just triggered that, Ryan. Actually, I'm thinking, is it? So are we are we saying that as we get older, we you know we start we start to listen to other people, we start to see examples around us, so we start to learn maybe that we we. We don't, we don't really care, but we start to care about things that are around us. You know, we start to, we start to think and start to, I suppose, extrapolate and think, oh, well, it's so unfair. We start to learn that we can almost like get rid of that accountability, you know, and resilience piece, because actually, you know, we want to wallow in that, that, that almost that victim state. Whereas when you're a baby, you don't have that. You just go, well, I want to walk. I've seen someone walk. I want to start walking. Right. What do I, you know, I don't even think about it. I just do it, go do it. Um, so I'm really thinking about that, you know, those first bits of human life that, you know, it's almost like judgment and all those sorts of things. We tend to learn them as we go through life. So, yeah, that's my thought on it. That just triggered me there. That was a really, yeah, when you said that, yeah. And I thought about how babies learn. They're pretty resilient, right? They are pretty, they want to learn a lot in a very short space of time. Um, so, yeah, that's my take on it. Any like thought? It. That's a good little observation there, Joe. I've not really thought about that, but I like yeah. that. Yeah, I, I just, it just came to mind because it's some, almost like it's like you've, and, you know, I'm not a psychologist. I don't understand how the brain works, but it's, it's almost like, you know, until a certain age, you're running on instinct more than anything else. And then, like you said, all those other bits start to come in and it's less instinct. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think there is an instinctive thing, but then we learn to almost like dampen it, you know, where yeah. we have this whole thing, don't we? Um, so I think there's a lot of learned behavior that we take on board depending on our environment um and i've been reading a book by jordan peterson very very re recently um and he's got he's written a book called the 12 rules for life i've always i'll put this on my my tiktok lives um for you to join um but you know he talks about a lot about things about learned behavior um and that we have to pay attention and uh, one of the things i wrote down actually when you were both talking is that sometimes we have to be very honest with ourselves we have to tell ourselves the truth if we're in a difficult situation we sometimes have to face the truth and that's very difficult sometimes because we don't necessarily want to face it. So, yeah. And I think, you know, as a, as a baby, you're, you're facing the truth. You just go, well, I can't, we I mean, don't even think I can't, well, just, I'm going to just try walking. You don't think about it, just do it. But I think as we get older, we tend to overthink things. We tend to like think, oh, can I do it? What other people are going to think? And I think that stops a lot of that resilient piece, you know, in our tracks, you know, because, you know, we either, we're either going to blame everybody else and say, well, it was all that, that person's fault and then we just give away our power and don't start to build things don't start to you know that's almost like build that resilience skill back up um you know so i think we can harness that that ability when we're about we didn't really care what people thought we didn't really care about what was going on around who did it um i think we can really get along uh, quite a long way um so yeah <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's my take on it i really i really enjoyed this actually this conversation it's um you know it's really good so yeah yes so anything else guys from us so guys if you're on the TikTok live please don't forget to share like this live please i would appreciate that um that would be great so if you could do that that'd be amazing if you could do that guys lee what about you you got anything yes no i was going to just say again same as that joe huge appreciation for anyone supporting the show um i guess you know the the the, the key message for people listening and watching to take away from this is is that self-reflection in what you know what is your level of resilience? How has it helped you in the past? How could it help you more? I just think it's one of those things to really grab hold and harness that anyone could do um, that can just really help with whatever journey people are on. And that's, for my takeaway, that's also the thing I would like people to have as their takeaway for today. I'll come back for you two for takeaways in a second, but first I just want to give a shout out, everyone who's loving what we're doing, head over to inspirationnation.org.uk, full details of our coaching service there, the Inspiration Nation store, grab your fantastic merch, my mug for the camera there through my blur. Can't really see it. It's like I've got something rude on the mug because it's all censored for those watching on YouTube. T-shirts, hoodies, all that sort of jazz all over inspirationnation.org.uk. Sign up for the newsletter. 
archive, etc., etc., etc. All there. And again, social media, check us out at listen to I N, listen to I N. Give us a follow, share what we're doing, um, share it with your communities on there, get more people involved. And check out Joe. He is everywhere. Jose Noya, Inspiration Nation. Just stick it into Google, search for him, especially though TikTok is a favorite place right now. J Noya underscore Inspiration Nation. You can join us live every single week for the podcast. And Joe, you are, I would say, you're getting fairly regularly every other day or so live on the TikTok. Yeah, try and go every day. Try and go every day. I just wanted to give a quick shout out whilst there's a little gap. Uh, Ram Ram Boone, I think, I think, I think these days, unfortunately, people get a kick out of others' failures and it's sad. I totally agree with that. I think we need to be lifting others up. And it's what this podcast is about. So if if if, if that's you. You lift others up. That's the whole point of the life. We're here to serve. We're here to help other people. And this is what this podcast is about. It's helping other people. So, you know, that's really what this is about. So that's what's really, really important. So that is what we really need. Um, so, yeah, you know, so that's what this is all really about. So please don't forget to share this live. Please like right. it. Get positive. Yeah, go on. Go on, Lee. You're going to say. Takeaways, guys. Ryan and Jose. You're more resilient than you think. Hmm. That's a good one. You're more resilient than you think. Uh, mine is, you always have resilience inside you. I think the, the key here is to be honest with yourself where you currently are. But it's always, there's always a solution to wherever you are right now. And that's mine. Right, you, Perfect. Love that. So well, mine is, it's just a takeaway. It's, it's harnessing it. You just don't even pay attention to what I say, Joe, no, do you? You don't did care. It. He did don't do listen. It. I'm just like an accessory to him. That's all it is. You're not an accessory. You're both very important. <laughs> <laughs> As is everyone out there listening. We yep. appreciate all of you. Again, whatever podcast platform you are on, just hit subscribe. Hit subscribe on YouTube. Follow Joe over on TikTok. Again, Jay Noya underscore inspiration nation leaves a five-star review tell friends and family word of mouth is absolutely what helps us grow. We appreciate all of that. And I think with that said, it's just for me to count us down. We'll be back again next week. Three, two, one. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Nation. I'll catch, catch you guys, guys later. So I want to know now what's your biggest takeaway. Don't forget to hashtag it with Inspiration Nation in the comments below and make sure you commit to action. Thank you for checking out. So don't forget to catch all our other Inspiration Nation podcast episodes right over here. So go check them out. And also, don't forget to subscribe because that will tell you when your next video goes live by you hitting that amazing bell. So until next time, it's Inspiration Nation, and I'll see you right over there.